Hello everyone, welcome again in Engman YouTube channel. So in this video, we will continue our quick knowledge session. And today's topic is about completion fluid. Okay, here we go. All right, as you can see here in this graph, we have common completion fluid brines that are used in, for example, completion or workover or infill drilling or well service. Okay, and you can see we have potassium chloride, KCl, we have ammonium chloride, NH4Cl, we have sodium chloride, and we have the combination of sodium chloride and KCl. We have a combination of KCl and KBr, and so on and so forth. And here, first you can see at the top of the chart, we have maximum brine density, all right, in pound per gallon. And down there, we have maximum brine density. And of course, the specific gravity is relative to density of water. All right, and you can see these important numbers. All right, the maximum brine density for potassium chloride is 9.6. For ammonium chloride, it is 9.7. For sodium chloride, it is 9.9. .9. And for the combination of sodium chloride and potassium chloride, it is 10, the maximum brine density, and so on and so forth. And you can see if you go down there, the maximum brine density of KCL all right, is 1 plus something, maybe 1.2. And for, for example, the combination of sodium chloride and potassium chloride, there you go there, yeah, around or close to 1.2. Here we have one, there we have 1.5 specific gravity relative to density of water. All right, so this chart is important. I think the most common completion fluid that is used is, of course, the KCl, ammonium chloride. All right, these two can be used to avoid clay swelling. All right, and sometimes we can also use the other completion fluids as per our situation. Okay, please make sure that you need to avoid clay swelling and you need to make your liquid column heavier or also sometimes lighter, all right? Heavier if there is a potential of well kick, all right? But lighter, for example, if you want to provide underbalance perforation, all right? So you can use this number as a guide to design your completion fluid, all right? And so from here, we go to these descriptions. We can read together. The maximum density of a brine depends on the salts use, brine temperature, and to a lesser extent, pressure. All right, so as you can see, we have several completion fluids here with the salts use. All right, and of course, the, the salts will influence, will govern the maximum density of the brine, and also the temperature and pressure to a lesser extent. All right, but you need to remember that these numbers, 9.6, 9.7, and so on and so forth, can only be used as a guide, not as exact values. Why? Here, the maximum density will reduce as the temperature reduces also. For example, deep water brines will have lower maximum densities than similar brines used in a non-shore operation. All right, usually maybe we have higher temperature in onshore operation, then the maximum density in deep water brines will be lower compared to the similar brine used in onshore operation or land operation. Okay, so that's important. And lastly, generally speaking, mixtures of brines can achieve higher densities than single salt brines. All right, so for example, here we have a combination of sodium chloride and potassium chloride. It can achieve maximum brine density of 10 ppg, but single KCl is only 9.6 and single sodium chloride is only 9.9. .9. 
but when we combine the two salts, we can achieve higher maximum brine density. All right, so that's all. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope this video is useful and important for us. Thank you so much for watching and see you again in the next quick knowledge videos. Thank you.